Hello folks, welcome to my YouTube channel. This video is a continuation in a series of videos which I'm making on the module on Kubernetes. It is hosted on Cryo Projects, the entire module, and I'm going to talk about the different aspects of it. So the first video is the which is a video which I run through all the different steps. In the next videos, I talk about the different bring it on sections in each milestone. So here we are on the sixth milestone, and if you look at the bring it on points here, we'll see that the first thing is about YAML specifications. So if you have reached up to this milestone, you understand what YAML specifications are and how you use them to run applications or Kubernetes. So is that the only way to run applications is the question here. But so the answer is no, you have other methods as well. So I'll just open this link here and we'll see what the different <coughs> methods are. Let's check it out. So when you look at it, you'll see that it's an imperative way and there's declarative way in short. So this is how you use um, the imperative way to create any object you want. For example, they are creating a deployment here without using a YAML file. So you don't see any YAML file here and still you can create a deployment. So this is how you do it. You use the cube control create command and then you specify the object which you're going to create, the name of the object and the image is going to use. And you might have a question that when you're writing a YAML file, there are a lot of other parameters as well, apart from image, right? So what you do is you specify flags, you add some more flags to this command to satisfy all the different parameters here. So this is one way of doing it. The other way which you already know is the YAML file, you build a YAML file and then you create the YAML file. So what I'm going to do right now is quickly show you a demo of it on my cluster. So let's check out um, a deployment file which I created for Nginx. So yeah, so let me see if it is. So as you can observe, I'll just make it full screen here. Yeah, so this is the YAML file which I created for deployment. So you must be familiar with the idea of it. You specify the object in, in the kind parameter and then you look at the image which you want. The image is uh, the Nginx image and we are creating an Nginx container. So this is how you define a very basic uh, deployment replica. Uh, so I'll just quit. And how you create instances and how you create objects in this case is you use kube control apply or create. I'll just use create. Then you specify this flag F, which means I'm creating this uh, object from a file, from a uh, configuration. So I'll specify the name of the file here, nginx deploy.yaml. So what this command does is it takes all of that parameters from your file which you specified and then it creates an object out of it. So as you can see, uh, the deployment is now created. You can also check out uh, if it's created or not by using, oh man, why do I type so slow? Cube control, get deployment, deployment. So you can see engineer's deployment is uh, getting ready and there are two replicas that are specified inside the file. The other way of doing the same thing is by following this imperative way of, I'll just copy this entire command here and we'll paste it inside of our so yeah, so you see another deployment has been created. Now if you check out the deployments here, you'll see that it has already uh, taken default value of one replica. If I want to add another replica to it, I need to add a flag. So what I'll do is I'll create deployment. I'll just modify the name of it, nginx2. Say I want replicas equal to two. I'll do that. Now when you check deployments now, you'll see that another deployment has been created with replicas too. So this is how you specify all the parameters. So let's talk about the pros and cons. So in the case of having a YAML file, what you advantage that you have is you can use Git or other version control to track changes that you make to objects, right? So when you look at, <coughs> say for example, this YAML file, you have a kind of template which you can use for creating multiple objects. You don't have to write the entire command again and again. So you do have a template, you can use Git to control the changes that you make to this particular file and then you can create objects out of it. On the other hand, when you're just creating using the command line, you'll have to specify all the different parameters that you want on the command line itself and you can't easily reproduce it, right? And you don't have any track of uh, how these things run and all these things. But the advantage to using imperative commands is really easy to understand. Like you, you can look at the entire command and understand what's going on and plus it's really fast. You don't need to create a YAML file just so you can see a deployment running. So when you are 
debugging application debugging some idea or you want to test out some features you can use imperative functionality to very quickly spin up a deployment or a pod instead of writing an yaml file storing it in your account account and then applying it right so this is uh, the advantage to imperative but mostly in case of uh, applications and when you're building large applications use the yaml file because you can track and then you can also have a way to you know replicate this functionality and again for example if you're debugging a large application so this is uh, the two methods now we'll just go back and see what the other point is the other thing is pods aren't the only objects you can deploy in kubernetes so so far we already talked about deployment in this first step so you might have an idea that you don't need only deploy pods inside a kubernetes cluster so you also deploy deployments so deployments are just uh, i won't tell you what deployments are i will encourage you to you know go ahead and search for it so on your own but apart from pods and deployments there are other different objects as well so you can check out the workloads uh, documentation page you'll see deployment you'll see stateful set you'll see daemon set and you see job cron job so all of these are really important and they uh, fulfill some particular you know use cases so you have say for example job and you can have a cron job and you can schedule it to run at a particular time so this is what a cron job does you have a daemon set which can provide you uh, access to all for example if you use a daemon set you can have your pod run across all the nodes so this is uh, there are just different controllers which you can use for different specific use cases for example i've used demons before when i was building a network application and you can uh, run other you can just look at the different uh, resources listed down here as well to understand more so yeah pods and deployments aren't the only objects there are other objects as well i encourage you to explore more and maybe go ahead and create a job and see if you can have a schedule if you can run it on a particular times and create some some fun something fun out of it and let me know if you have any such a thing so that is it and i hope uh, it was informational to you and you find something useful out of this video thank you for watching